Hi, my name's Max Drake. I just want to do a little uh, talk about um, Actiona, or Action A. It's action with an A on the end. Uh, it's a macro program. Uh, when I looked on YouTube, there weren't many videos on it, and I was a little bit... Um, I was struggling it w with it a bit because there wasn't. I actually found the um, help files were written by coders, so it was a bit terse. And for basic people who want to use it, uh, it's a bit hard to understand. This is the icon down here, and I've got two versions open. What I'm actually trying to do with this is I have a 3D PDF, which I've created from a, a Revit model with some parameters and information inside. It brings it across into the 3D PDF. And inside the PDF, I can actually export the parameters into a CSV file. I can then open it up in an Excel macro and um, filter the information that comes through and uh, send it out to a separate sheet. And that is just the room data. So each room inside the model has information regarding its uh, floor area, its wall area, um, and what finishes they are like, um, floor concrete, um, floors got vinyl on, etc., etc. So what this does here is I'm using Axona straight away. And uh, the first one is I'm actually calling it to start Acrobat. I then use window condition that says, if the window condition uh, exists, as in it's opened up, then go on to the next action. If it doesn't, then wait. I then give it a pause, um, which you can do here. Although in the window condition ones, in the advanced, sorry, in the common area, you can put pauses in there before and after the actual that function that you're actually calling. Um, the next one is I've actually called a key um, from the key part here. And I've just done Control O, which is a, a, a key within Adobe Acrobat for opening a file, which does a pop-up window. I then created three variables. The first one is called the directory of where it's to go and look for the file. The second one is the actual file name itself. I've given an actual string here. And the third variable is the um, extension on the end. Now, the reason I've done the variables is so that I can actually grab the file name. So when I save the CSV file, I can actually save the CSV file name. Uh, I can use the um, input file name for the export file name. Later on, I'm thinking that you could end up with a whole load of PDFs inside one directory and it'll go through and actually work through each one, open them up, do the actual processing, close them down again and create a whole lot of different CSVs, in which case you actually want them naming. So this is why I've done it this way. And then use a write text. Now within the write text one, this will actually write. So when the pop-up box comes up, it actually says, what file do you actually want? And inside here, um, I can actually say, give me the insert variable directory, give me variable file uh, name, and also give me um, file um, type PDF. So it's going to look at those. Now, initially, I thought you might have to put pluses in with this, but in fact, this works better as, as per though. You just string them all together, and it just goes and finds three variables, concatenates them together, puts them in there, which is very nice. Now, it works fine in here, but it didn't work in my Excel one. After that, I just use a key return, which is just enter, just to say that's when on the pop-up box, it kind of you put in the file name, and then it says OK or open, and then you go enter for that. I then done a click in here um, uh, because I've got to go inside the PDF now. I might just run. Now, here's another little thing that you can do. I'm just going to take the first one uh, up to here and actually just in the execute that first red one execute runs everything one thing which I don't like about this thing is there doesn't seem to be any shortcuts that you can put to these um, which is a bit of a pain um, uh, oh yes you can control plus space Jesus oh that's brilliant um, sorry that's for that one and also file you haven't got file here I find it quite irritating having to use control save to save it and also if you want to file another one it doesn't list them it lists them here but it's a bit of a pain um, uh, and finding a script. So it would be nice to be able to put little icons in this uh, ribbon along here, but I can't see how to do that. Um, anyway, there's the ex execute, and it executes the whole one. This one here just executes a selection. Now, since I've just found that, um, 
execute selection control out space okay then so i'll try that control out space bit of a key stretch now here it's running those first parts here and here it's asking for the file um, and it's stopped at this point here and then it comes through to the open so i'm just going to cancel that out there um, just for this point in time here, I'm just going to open up the actual file that I've got here. The next part of the process is that I've got to go into this model tree. Now this is something in 3D PDFs and they don't seem to have any shortcuts to it. So the only way that you can do to select the whole uh, model is to just click on the actual model itself. Then if you right click and come right down to export and then drag across. So the art here is to get the mouse to drag across the here, click enter drag across to here then click enter then it's saying take all of that and export it to a file now i'm just going to do it, do it to this file here it's already there and i'm just going to go save and replace the existing file so that's the process of what i want to do then i just want to close the file down at the end of one which is i think is control w which just closes that back down to that point there i could close down the program completely and i think there's control q which that's that um, i may have that i'm still trying to automate part of this and testing it um, now it didn't write the text there so what we can actually do is i'll actually just fire up those ones there um, we we'll just try to there and we we'll just see if that runs so that was control out space and we we'll run that ah. so it's coming through and it's actually opened the file itself so that's brilliant so it's done all of those things together i find sometimes with the macros the first time you do it it doesn't work the second time you do it it seems to work fine um, and that's in a few of the macro programs that i'm playing with at the moment sorry that's the wrong one um so um it then goes through um, click and then I've got to do a pause um, as it opens up the file I've actually got something to um, I can't remember why I had that click um, Ah, oh, I think on some of them it doesn't like the 3D PFs and there's a bar that comes up in the middle here that it says enable or allow this PDF to be 3D PDF to be viewed. It's got to be a trusted site or something. So that click takes care of that. Um, uh, and then the other one there, that right text did actually work on that one there. So that's fine. So we've done that part of the process. A couple of things, when you're running the scripts itself, um, uh, in the settings, it has these little icons that come up while the program's running. The other thing to look at is on this side here, if it errors anywhere, it comes up on the console there showing which line, so you can go and text a bit. In this one here, this, so I've done that one there, and that's what the one where it's actually done, and it's created the file. In fact, um, uh, I've asked it to go and, sorry, let's, let's just go back to that one there. Um, okay. Uh, shift uh, enter and we'll open up the other one again in the script dum, 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 recent the Adobe one in the recent one um, I then create an output directory um, uh, which is in fact uh, not the directory where I opened it from and I've got a variable which is a file type name uh, CSV so when I actually write the text to the thing I put the out directory the file name and the file type and I converted it instead of the PDF I've converted to CSV so that's why it's broken down there and then it closes out of the program and does what it needs to do there so that works really nicely now um, in Excel I'll just run this file and we'll see how far we get with it um, in Excel um, I just need to make sure it's closed Although I don't know. Okay, let's just leave it open and just see if that works any better. Um, now in Excel, I did find it a problem. Excel, you can't just use Control Open just to open a file. It was bloody frustrating. Um, so what you've got to do is tell it what file to actually open. So I put that in the parameters um, to do that. So it does, if, if you're doing it in a fast key, you'll give the executable file of where the Excel is, and then you leave a space, and then you put another string of what file you actually want to open, and then it'll open that specific file. So that's fine. So anyway, we'll just run this and see how far we get with it.
So you see this little icon here, which says that the program is actually running. You can see action actually occurring here. You see it's opening up the macro, it's doing some events through there. And it's now created the table with the um, filtered it out for the information and it's created it onto a new tab. Um, but it hasn't gone through and done the last part. So after it's actually done the export to a new file, if I just go there, no, um, shift, um, execute selection. Uh, this is a problem which I'm actually coming up with now, which is it's popping. If you've run it a couple of times, it runs out of memory. I don't know where this memory is, whether it's part of the Excel one or not. Anyway, as soon as you click that, um, we just save it as that. Yes, we'll do that. And it hasn't actually done it. But if inside the macro sheet itself, the next part of it was... Um, Export selected sheet, so we type room 5, which is this one here, and we go OK. And we create this one here, we go save to there, and then we replace. And then if we just go into, um, I can't remember where, that, where we put that, I think we put that on the desktop. No. Uh, macro folder and we just go Exiona and we go PDF one two three four and it's brought the information through into that so it's something to do with the memory inside um, Excel I think it doesn't like it because it's running a few things so we've saved that data to another file so I've still got to um, save those arrow ones if I just stay in in Excel I start off in this um, tab itself so that it's instructions on how to use the actual macro macro I then have to tab across to the macro sheet and instead of using mouse clicks which depending on your screen and how you set up your screen whether it's maximized or whatever you could be missing it with the mouses so the first one is delete and then the second one is to import um, some information and uh, I need to back up go to macros and actually PDF and this is the file that came out from the PDF um, it comes through onto there we then have to filter it by rooms and then we push it through and I'm just going to delete this particular um, sheet and it will create a new sheet and it's room 5 it's 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 part of the next part of the macro there so that's one of the things now what I actually found when I was inside Excel now I did use auto IT before this and inside auto IT you can get packages or add-ins that actually um, there's some which actually work with inside Excel um, to do some of the work in here for this Excel what I ended up doing was um, if I just click on that and go assign macro the macro there is called delete information if I go into the developer mode and I go macros what I can actually do delete information now normally you can get into this I don't know why that's not happening um, you can actually go into the options and you can assign a macro key to it or a hotkey to it. So that's how I've actually run through these scripts for doing all of those processes. So where I've um, uh, used, I, I've then been able to inside Excel um, use um, where's my filter room so here we go for that one no oh no pardon me that's just a return for filtering rooms i've got control r for rooms um, prior to that um, 
transpose to, to, to thing, I ended up putting a macro called control T inside that. So I actually had to go back into my macro file, alter, oh sorry, is it Visual, no, Visual Basic brings that up. And, um, that's the problem. Um, so we've unlocked that. So the macros were actually locked inside there. Um, so here, now we're inside here. If I go delete info and I go options, you can see I can actually uh, put a, uh, a macro key towards it. And that's only working inside the program. So you're not worried about those macros because a lot of them are... Um, uh, so for room, the options for that is control plus R. Since a lot of those are your normal macro keys, um, uh, assign keys and other programs these only work for those macros once you're actually inside this sheet and again when I actually came into the Excel one you need to be able to enable the macros inside the sheet otherwise um, that doesn't work um, no, let me just no, cancel we can delete that um, now um, I found uh, a couple of things that are being so that's what I uh, one of the things which I found in the second macro was again I tried using variables for the directory and the file name so that I could preset those up when I went to try and use them in the right text and bring in the actual um, uh, put in the variables that didn't work so I actually had to put in the proper string so I was a little bit disappointed with the fact that it was a little bit buggy inside there um, I found this was a, a more generic process than using the auto IT of which I actually had to include certain packages and then make sure that those packages were actually working uh, inside the the program so that they would they'd run um, the one thing with this as well um, you can actually um, add a script resource so you can actually and i've yet to try this i'd like to get these two running smoothly uh, the two macros together you can include the other one and then you can compile it so inside here you can execute export to an exe so um, uh, any the only thing with the exe on this um, uh, program is it's quite a large file it starts off of 14 megabytes because i think it's already copying in half the program into it and then a lot of the when you actually put in a few commands you see that it doesn't actually grow any bigger so it's a large file to use now, what I'm t thinking of using that one in uh, in regards to is another one, which is the or a free one, which is Fibuti Automation Workshop, and that one you can actually set uh, schedule times for. Um, you can't. I don't think you can schedule um, times for these ones. Um, but this one's got an awful lot and it actually does loops and a few other things so I was just doing some basic stuff but there wasn't anything that just walked you through um, some of the programs one of the things with the, the um, key actions or something all of them usually have a pause before and a pause after and I usually find that a lot of the, in the debugging there's a lot of issues with um, getting your timing right as it goes through. It's usually going through at such a speed that you actually have to slow it down slightly. So if you want to do a pause after, you just grab it all and put a hundred milliseconds, um, or you know, a thousand is a, a second. Um, uh, I start, try and keep it small and then tweak them as I need to. You can always put in pauses as well. Um, sometimes it's better. It's like um, I this I quite like this window condition, although I've had some problems with this, and in fact I think I've switched off an awful lot of them because they seem to be playing up. They don't seem to be reading the right thing. But the window condition is brilliant for if it exists, then go on to the next action. I have seen ones which actually just look at the pixels in a certain area. So they just look in a certain area on the drawer, on, on the thing and wait until those pixels have changed to the colour of when the file actually opens. And that's one way that other programs do them with, with mouse clicks. So I've mainly been using the variables. Um, I'm still 
don't quite know the difference between a command and a detached command, but the command apparently opens and closes them, whereas the detached command just does one, which is it just opens them. Um, I haven't tried the text of speech either. So there's a few things they're just playing with, but overall I've been quite happy to actually see this process working. Now I've done this with um, uh, this uh, with Akona and um, I'm just going to post this one now. So I hope it's been of interest to people. Another thing which I do find quite nice on it is that you can colour um, lines and you can also put in comments which are quite handy and you can give an explanation of why you're doing things. So it's actually I quite like the um, uh, being able to comment out certain points along the way so that it makes your codes quite easy. Um, I can't remember what scripting language it does itself and I haven't quite figured out parameters yet. Um, uh, but um, it's definitely a good free program so I would um, give it a try if you're into macros and as far as just stepping through processing goes. Not so sure about the EXE um, files I, I would like to get this one running and I'd like it to be able to be a little bit more sophisticated but again you start off with the basics get one operation working and then start doing it to read from a file do extra things and the other one is like all it needs to do is actually just read from a directory so if there's something like um, 30 PDFs in there it would read the first PDF open it close it and either delete that file or move that file to another directory and then go through and read the next file and that file will come to the top of the list and then it just reads that so it just iterate through all of them you can also loop there are loops if you know that you've only got a specific amount to actually do um, uh, and it can do the go to so it can actually jump part of the code so you can do if this then that type things um, so nice program I quite I found it a hell of a lot easier to use than the auto IT um, and I really like being able to just to be able to test a small part of the script as well um, the other thing that you can do is you can actually take a, a, a key say that one there and you can paste it so that's really handy that you don't have to keep on dragging a new one and set it up if you've got the other one set up nicely just use it and slightly and then just edit that um, so it brought on a few things of challenges inside macro excel macro workbooks and using hotkeys inside there to actually try and speed through and process um, in the auto IT you could actually call the macro name itself um, I don't think you can in 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 this well this was a solution I actually found for for this so um, if you're interested give it a try lots of ums in this one but I hope it's been of interest for you